Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to Hunter Tuned. Today we're going to be doing a couple different things on the video. Um, to start off, I did fix a couple cars that I may throw in uh, some clips from doing those. And uh, stick around to the end of the video and you'll see this car, EF Hatch, that was actually uh, on a previous video. We're going to try to get this thing running good and swapped over to ethanol. And we're going to kind of do comparisons between uh, how much power the car makes on pump gas versus how much the car makes on ethanol. No other changes. And we're also swapping it over from Honda Data to Honda Tuning Suite. So currently I'm just draining the gas out of it into my uh, BP Racing gas can. I actually got two of these gas cans off of eBay and they are awesome guys. They have the big old snout on them so you can just put them right into the car and uh, no spilling and they flow really fast. So you can put five gallons in a car in less than like a minute, which is pretty quick. So the last couple days I actually thought I had some issues with the dyno not reading right. Um, so I actually had all the pit covers off of the dyno and I, re I greased every single bearing on this thing. I used like two tubes of grease, uh, just kind of making sure everything was good because there was a noise that the dyno was making um, when the car would slow down. It wasn't like a really bad noise but it was enough of a noise to maybe alarm me a little bit. So I just made sure everything was good there. But moral of the story is, is I thought the dyno was bad, but I need to just have faith in my dyno and uh, realize that the last couple cars that were on here were just turds and non-working VTEC. I had, in the last couple days, I've had three cars on the dyno, all of them with not operating VTEC, not properly activating VTEC. So um, that sucks. It sucks getting dealt that kind, them kind of cars and uh, you know having to explain to the customer that they're not making a number because of you know VTEC issues. And VTEC issues are a lot more time consuming to fix a lot of times. If it's not a simple wiring thing, um, it's usually a, you know take the cylinder head apart and fix whatever's wrong with VTEC or it's an oil pressure itself issue. Uh, so I just kind of think having an oil pressure gauge in every car is must needed, especially when you're diagnosing VTEC issues. Ooh, this thing's running out of gas. This looks kind of cool because I have such long clear hose for the gas to flow out of. Today we are working on a EM1 Honda Civic and uh, we are fixing some stuff on it because the car was brought in for a tune and uh, we need to address a couple things first before we tune the car. So um, number one, I noticed right away when it got dropped off when I pulled it into the shop, it has a pretty bad exhaust leak and uh, I have it up on the hoist right now and I'm gonna show you guys kind of what we're looking at. It's got a header on it with a patch job that is not fully welded. So we're just gonna fully weld this patch back on um, and hopefully cure that exhaust leak. And it also had a pan gasket leak or something uh, pretty bad. It leaked uh, a little bit of oil on the dyno just pulling it in and he wanted to get that stuff fixed. So we may have to take the pan down and fix it, but I, I just sprayed it all off and made sure that it is the pan gasket that's leaking. Um, so I'm going to inspect some of this stuff up here too, like the uh, oil sandwich plate and the oil filter housing and all that. Uh, but I think first things first is I'm just gonna get this welded up. Made sure the O2 sensors came out of this thing so I can put a wide band in it for when we tune it. And then uh, once we do the exhaust, I'll start it up, raise it back up, check for any exhaust leaks, and then uh, check for any of the oil leaks as well and see exactly where the oil leak is coming from. So I'll pick up when I'm done welding this little patch on. All right, guys, so we uh, had to patch up a couple spots on the exhaust that were... Uh, leaking and I uh, got all that sorted out and while the car was running and I was checking for exhaust leaks like I was saying is uh, I did find an oil leak and it was not the pan not the oil pan gasket that was leaking it was actually this oil sandwich plate that was leaking because there was no seal on the sandwich plate to block uh, side of things so I actually just grabbed this gasket off of a uh, old mobile one oil filter I had laying around uh, like a used one and it was actually a little bit too big so what I'm gonna do is I just cut a small section I cut a small section out of the old oil filter uh, o-ring and now it is perfect size and then I'll just put I'll dab some RTV in the section where it needs to butt together so uh, that, that'll work great 
but uh, it's kind of tough because you can't just get a seal like this. Um, you know, I, I, at least I don't have one laying around, but this Mobile One Filter one is literally perfect. Like, it's, it is ideal. Look at that. And I'll just dab a little RTV right there and send it. And no more oil leaks. But I bet you this car probably had VTEC engaging issues too because of, uh, I mean, that's a pretty high pressure spot and that's why it was leaking so bad. Uh, is you know that's the first place the motor gets oil is the oil filter so if it's leaking right out of there it's gonna lose pressure it's gonna lose uh, oil obviously and yeah it's not be good so I'm going to uh, get this oil sandwich button back up we're gonna drain the oil out of it do an oil change and then uh, get the wide band installed back it up and throw it on the dyno today we're working on the wagon again uh, you guys know in one of the last videos I actually talked about uh, this car having a VTEC issue and VTEC not properly engaging, but I ended up fixing it finally. I've been messing with this car hours and 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 hours. And I finally fixed it. So uh, just a good thing, maybe a positive note to share with some of you guys is just keep pushing, keep, keep, just keep, keep pushing. Gotta keep going and uh, it, it comes around eventually so this one fought me really hard um, I initially plumbed I was telling you guys I was gonna plumb the oil line like an LSV tech so the oil from the back of the block by the where the turbo oil feed is uh, I fed into the pressure switch spot on the VTEC solenoid now that did not work feeding it into that spot I fed it into uh, the spot right below the distributor and it worked so um, I will kind of show you guys where maybe if you guys can see you probably won't be able to but uh, you might be able to see the AN line it's right below this bolt or this like stub on the head it's right below that and it's just a little uh, plug just like it is on a B16 head there's like a little plug right here that's where I put it and right when I did that I would power the solenoid just to see if I could hear it clacking hear the VTEC uh, engaging or not and with it into the pressure switch spot I could not hear VTEC doing anything you could hook up the solenoid to direct power and it literally wouldn't do anything it would not change pitch it would not change uh, how the motor acted nothing but when I ran it into that spot which is right next to the VTEC solenoid oiling like orifice of the head so I fed it in there and then I hooked power to the solenoid and the car died. And that's when I knew I was on the right track. So uh, we were dynoing this thing and we had like wideband issues and a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, just not only the VTEC issue, but like the turbo exploded when I got here and then we had to redo everything. And then I had the whole head apart, uh, valve lash, you name it. I've tried everything on this car to get it to work right. And finally, I'm getting it to work right. And it's finally painting a good power curve. Very happy. Uh, the tune-up still needs to be worked out, but we picked up 60, 55 horsepower hooking VTEC up. So that is crazy. It was making 211 before without VTEC, and now it's making 264. So very happy. I'm gonna try to iron out a few more things, uh, get the fueling and timing and everything uh, dialed in and actually finally be able to tune this car. And uh, once I do, I'll pick up on the final numbers and this thing's out of here. I'm so happy to get this thing done. Um, yeah, very stoked that we got this one figured out. All right guys, so we got the uh, little EF on the dyno and uh, I've just been uh, off camera just trying to get the gear ratio tack to sync with the dyno in the car and this car just does not want to sync up uh, no matter what I do to the to the gear ratio on this thing it's either a thousand rpm low or a thousand rpm high I can't get it to actually sync up perfectly so uh, we're just gonna have to deal with it for now uh, but we do have the E85 in the car now and I did run through the fuel map and this thing just runs awesome I love this car it uh, it just it screams so uh, so far, note, I have 24 degrees of timing in it on ethanol, which is nothing. And I'm saying it's nothing, dude. And we're making a buck 83, 
and 139 foot pounds, revving it to about 85. Uh, like I said, this is about a thousand RPM off, and it's saying I hit the limiter ish around 73 ish. So uh, I'm gonna just give it another go, maybe add two degrees of timing on just the VTEC side and see how much power we can gain. And if it likes it, we're gonna add another degree. Uh, after that, we'll just go a degree at a time, but I feel like I'm so soft right now, so conservative, uh, that we're gonna give two right away just to see if it responds well, and uh, we'll go from there. Right, guys so we did pick up some power you guys can probably see let me zoom in on this a little bit so you can tell this is literally just a timing change this is nothing else other than that and you can see where it picked up like pretty much everywhere uh, where it was rocky here uh, yeah it picked up everywhere guys we're gonna it smoothened out too that's another good indicator I've been saying it a lot uh, I've been seeing it a lot on the dyno when I'm really conservative on the timing, it's got a rocky kind of power curve. And then when you give it timing where it likes it, it picks up power. So we're gonna actually give it two more degrees and see what it, if it likes it or not. So it did not like that timing. It actually lost two horsepower. Uh, so, and it started getting rocky again after I put another degree or two in. So I'm gonna go back to the timing that we had and play with the fueling now again and go in and out of it with fuel and see what where it likes it. guys so I've been playing with this thing quite a bit uh, putting you know trying like 11 8 air fuel 12 5 air fuel 13 5 air fuel uh, kind of everything in between and I've tried timing anywhere from like 25 to 30 and it loves 28 degrees I try to give it 29 and it loses power gets rocky I try uh, putting fuel in and out of it it doesn't change a whole lot I think this thing's choked up a little bit somewhere else um, like exhaust wise maybe so I actually might do a pull open header and see if it likes it. 
And if it does, that kind of just shows that maybe something in the exhaust is choking it a little bit, or possibly this header could definitely be choking this thing out a little bit too, uh, considering it has a pretty good sized dent in it. I've actually been talking with uh, James Mills down uh, at J Mills Tuning and just kind of talking over and getting some ideas from other tuners. And uh, I mean, everything looks really solid with the power, guys. We're just trying to squeeze every last horsepower out of this car. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know if you guys are racing dynos or not or what this thing should make on whatever else, some other dyno. But uh, I do feel like my dyno maybe reads a little low or it's a heartbreaker dyno for sure. But uh, nonetheless, it is repeatable and it's a good tuning tool for me, for sure. Uh, but I mean, we're almost clearing 108, we're making 186 horsepower. We did pick up uh, five horse just from playing with, you know, timing. And uh, I don't, I, I would bring up the old runs that this car made. It did make 180 horsepower before, uh, but I think it actually cleared 192 on one pull but it was like something, it was just like a spike in the dyno that it actually made that 192. So I'm gonna see if I can pull that up just to compare. Uh, see if it picked up like everywhere else on the bottom compared to uh, on pump gas. But James Mills was also telling me that some cars, some all motor cars will respond good to E85 and some of them won't. Some of them won't make any difference and some of them will pick up like five to 15 horsepower. It all depends on the setup. And if it's choked up anywhere in the exhaust or intake which this one is clearly not choked up at all on the intake side of things it has the skunk 2 ultra manifold and just like an elbow off of the uh, intake there no filter a uh, set of cam gears might help this thing carry out a little bit farther uh, but i don't really feel like spinning the bottom end the stock bottom end this is a gsr or type r bottom end i'm not exactly sure it's b18c uh, so it's jdm and I think he said it was five over, but I'm not 100% sure exactly what's in the bottom end. And he says it's got Skunk 2 Tuner 2 camshafts, which they act like Tuner 2s because it likes VTEC at 5,600 RPM. So normally uh, Tuner 2s do, do enjoy having their VTEC set very high and, you know, carry... They have a lot of, like, bottom end power, uh, Tuner 2 does, so they... If you set VTEC lower on them, you'll actually lose power coming into VTEC until it picks back up again. Uh, so, yeah. I'm going to possibly uh, unbolt the exhaust on this thing quick and we'll maybe do a rip open header. All right, guys. So I just actually crawled under the car and I got the exhaust unbolted from the header. So we removed pretty much the cap back from being a restriction. We're gonna try it out open header, but I'm really thinking that this thing's choked up in the header. And I'll show you guys why. So there's the dent. That one's pretty bad. And that one's way worse. Like it is pinched fucking shut. So we'll see what it does and uh, see if we can pick up a little bit just around an open header. And then he said he's actually getting a new header, so. Maybe we'll be able to keep the car here until we get the new header, or um, he'll bring it back when we get the new header. But let's see what it does now, open header. Safety first. This thing's gonna be loud. I mean, it picked up two horsepower, 
but it should have picked up more than that. I feel like we're making 187.7, and it followed the same exact curve. Uh, I mean, it was just a smidge bit better in a few spots, but not much to ride home about. So uh, we're gonna try a new header on this thing and then, you know, probably pick up on it again. But uh, I mean, it's not doing too bad, guys. This thing is a, a screamer, rips really good, but I bet you we'll be able to make 200 horsepower if we actually had a header on it that wasn't dented that bad. Uh, so I think that's our next next step that we need to do on this car. Alrighty guys, so we're actually off the dyno. We did that open header pull and uh, I didn't pick up ever since then. The guy actually came and got his car. We got another car in the shop here that we're going to be doing tomorrow. Uh, this is another all motor car that we're going to dial in and get ripping. But I did kind of want to show you the comparison between E85 and pump gas. We did not make any more peak power unfortunately. Uh, because of that header is what I'm thinking the open header pull did not make any change So that's telling me that if it does have a restriction, it's going to be in the header itself So that's what we're going to try to do next uh, He's going to get a header and he's going to come back possibly this weekend and we're going to try to get it dialed in even farther But guys you have to see the amount of gains that this thing got below peak power So you guys can see green is actually E85 and blue is the best pull we had on pump gas. So this was the last time he was here. I have <clears throat> the pulls overlaid and we picked up like 15 wheel horsepower in the mid range and almost 20 down low. So crazy big difference on E85. It just, you know, it's an oxygenated fuel kind of. So it's it's got to pick up power pour, just pouring it in. Um, but like I said, it's kind of doing the same, it's following the same path at the way top end of the pole. So that's either in the header restriction maybe, or possibly just in the cams. Um, he was thinking about just getting a set of Integra type R cams or something like that instead. But we're gonna, we'll play around with it and I'm sure it'll be back soon. Um, so hopefully you enjoyed uh, the little dyno session on that little EF. And then this is a EK <clears throat> that we're gonna be doing next. Uh, this is a, another high compression setup with blocks type something cams. I don't know exactly what cams are in here, but it's got a built up bottom end and uh, <clears throat> yeah, hopefully make some good jam with this one. And you guys can see that the Mustang is also on the hoist right now. Um, I, I got brand new tires on my new Civic here, the SI, the 2007. We got brand new tires on this. I have an alignment scheduled for Thursday, so I'll hopefully be able to start driving this thing soon. Uh, just to daily it um, and then I also am going to be turning this thing up here in the next day or two <clears throat> but the Mustang's on the hoist because I've actually had a few uh, friends come down uh, that are a little bit better with suspension and stuff than I am and I'm in a pickle guys this is the end of the video I just kind of wanted to throw it in here uh, but I've really been brainstorming quite a bit with the Mustang if I want to keep it or if I want to start over on a new chassis I love this car to death it's treated me very well but it's fucking sketchy. Like, it's not the cleanest, and <clears throat> um, by the time I stick a whole bunch of money into cleaning this thing up, uh, it might be easier just to go pick up a different Mustang, and I want a new edge. Like what Matt Happel just got, I really am jealous, and I want a newer body style Mustang. I don't really like the look of the Fox body, and I this car was a huge learning curve for me, and I fucked up a lot of things in the process, and I, Realistically for me to feel good good about this thing I want to redo a lot of it and I don't know if I want to continue doing it with this car or if I just want to start fresh with a new build um, I don't know keep the same motor and tranny and ECU and all that kind of stuff All the money that I have tied up into this car is replaceable like I can just take it out and put it into a different chassis Which I might do Or I might keep this. I, I don't know. It's just this thing's gonna take some work to get to uh you know get up to snuff and I don't know if I'm digging it anymore I don't know we'll see let me know what you guys think down in the comments and uh, yeah hopefully you enjoyed this video we'll be back with another one very soon and uh, yeah have a great night and a better tomorrow